tirerai pas 20 000 francs de tout ça. My name is Paul Thomas Anderson. I'm here to talk about the great Max Ophuls. I first came to Max Ophuls. I'm a little bit fuzzy exactly how it happened, but I think I'd been watching films that Sam Fuller had done, and I was reading that Sam Fuller was so great at these elaborate tracking shots, but, but really it was nothing compared to the master of the, the shot. So it led me to find Everything I Could by Max Ophuls. Oh. In terms of the earrings of Madame Du, this opening shot is clearly from her point of view, but it's also over her shoulder. And it doesn't really move on its own accord. It moves with her, it moves with her eyes. I think to look at the actress here, um, Danielle Derieux, who's in a bunch of his films, I think she's in three or four of his movies, it is a perfect reason why I think you can pull off a camera move like this if you have an actor that's in the frame that is capable of doing or is worth watching for that long a period of time. And she certainly is. She's just pretty magnificent. Ma croix. Ma croix. Oh non, j'adore. Évidemment, c'est cela que j'aime le moins. Après tout, ils sont à moi, j'ai bien le droit d'en faire ce que je veux. Max Ophels was really the first person to do with the camera what he did. There's nothing I've seen before these films that compares or comes close. But it's obvious to me now, you know, the stories sunk into my DNA of, of how to tell a story or, or what makes an interesting story. It just got in there so, so strongly. On reflection, I see these movies now and I think, I think, my God, this is probably the first time I was seeing anything like this. And I see things that I have obviously been influenced by or tried to rip off or tried to, tried to do, tried to tell a story in such a way. It's amazing how if a film is so good, it just, it gets, it gets under your skin. Victoria de Sica's appeal is a situation where once he comes on screen, you're, you're being appealed to because he's so handsome, he's so charming, and so genuinely seems like a wonderful man. I don't know much about Victoria de Sica as a man, but I know some of his films, and they obviously showed a, a tremendous amount of humanity and goodwill. The vision of her sets him fluttering, you know, that their first little flirtation there is so terrific. There's a little bit of a slapstick kind of routine there. He's trying to find his passport and, and all that, and which is um, very lighthearted and fun. And the fact that it's, that that's actually a throw, it's not a throwaway scene, it's very important, it's the first time he sees her, but that, that, it, that it doesn't go anywhere, that that's not where they meet. He doesn't run out and catch her and say, okay, what's going on? That there's this sort of dissolve to days or weeks later, I think they even say it, and their carts crash into each other. I don't know, somehow makes it feel authentic in the scheme of things and that their, their fates were obviously heading towards each other. You'd think that those sorts of things would come off as a device in a movie or something like that, but to me, I really feel it's kind of quite the opposite. You know, when you, you find someone that you're in love with, generally you find ways to justify how your fates have met. You can justify the most insane things and connecting pieces because it makes you feel good, and that's what love is. You found each other somehow. So um, none of those things when it comes to love actually this could seem far-fetched at all, that they would see each other and then see each other days later or get their, their, their carts connected to each other, horses run into each other. 
Moi aussi, je vous avais remarqué. Ah oui Vous portiez ce jour-là un costume à petits carreaux. Une écharpe de soie gris. All that scene's really terrific to me. And so gracefully done in this movie. Et ce jour-là, des yeux noirs, comme aujourd'hui. Le destin. Nous pouvons repartir, monsieur le baron. Déjà euh, On a fait le plus vite possible. Nous nous, nous, nous reverrons. Certainement. Le destin pour nous, qu'est-ce qui vient les choses Je ne trouve pas. Vous partez, je voulais vous dire. Quatre jours sans vous voir. On ne danse non plus à Paris. C'est pour vous laisser le temps de faire de la politique étrangère. Ah, bon. One of the nice things about setting up a shot like this is that is that it becomes the only thing that you're after, as opposed to you know, if you cut this up into five different shots, you have to do the first shot and try and get that shot right, and then you're after getting the second shot right, and your brain becomes fried by the end of it. it you know, as opposed to the sort of great thing about something like that is you know that's one shot and how you're trying to tell the scene, and you just go after getting that. So I'm always curious. I don't know how many takes he would do, I imagine they probably rehearsed a lot. Avez-vous de bonnes nouvelles de votre mari? Excellent, merci. And the funny thing about the dancing, although there is a lot, the camera is actually moving quite a bit. When I'm really staring at it now, it's actually moving quite a bit less than my initial impression that the actors are doing so much work and the extras as well, doing such a great job of occupying the background. It's one thing to have a reputation for being good at moving the camera, but you're really only as good as your dolly grip and your camera operator, and I imagine just in how big the cameras were at the time. And some of the pictures that I've seen, that usually you see two guys pushing the dolly. Avez-vous des bonnes nouvelles? De qui? Ah, oui. Merci, excellent. Kind of gets you all bubbly and, and, and lovey-dovey inside, sort of the way that they're dancing together. I start to really think about what what the act of dancing must have been at that time, at this moment in the movie. You know, perhaps you're unsure of where she's coming from. She's known as a tremendous flirt, and you're not really sure if she's just sort of doing the once over on him or on Victoria De Sica or or what. But I remember feeling when I first saw this feeling much more in touch with her at this moment that I think this is pretty genuine, that she is kind of out of her. The flirtation part of her act is a little bit over, that she's kind of fallen for him. J'ai reçu des nouvelles de mon mari. Excellent, merci. Comme c'était long. It's a very good question about whether or not anything was actually consummated between the two. I'm kind of convinced, as, as after the dissolve, that, that maybe some naughty business might have happened there. There's too much of a fever pitch and too much has been gone through to just get together and kiss and have, and have a chat. I, don't, I just don't think you go to those great lengths so that you could just sort of stare into each other's eyes and, and you know, and whisper, I don't love you, I don't love you. Je ne vous aime pas, je ne vous aime pas, je ne vous aime pas. Pourquoi m'avez-vous demandé mes poules? C'est curieux, vous avez pris d'habitude de ne jamais me laisser mener la conversation à Maggie. I think in seeing them dance here, you see the way that her face sort of droops down a little bit, and the way that she's breathing, her body language doesn't seem to be one of her routines. It just says to me that she's genuinely in peril here and in conflict about 
her life and her love for this man. We need a really good actress to do this sort of work. And this is a really, really good actress. This is a shot that I thought was terrific. It brings her uh, over to the lie. I understood where she was coming from. It was a lie that I, I expected her to tell, knowing what she'd gotten herself into. And quite honestly, I kind of went, I kind of could imagine myself trying to tell that same lie. You're so desperate to start start something new and start something fresh. You to me? Yes. Who My mother. Anybody's first reaction generally on being lied to is, you know, well, that's it then. You know, you take sort of revel in being lied to sometimes. People, you know, you, and you say, well, okay, I've been lied to. Well, that's it. Never again, whatever it is. That's a sort of natural response, you know, which is fine. But because it, it's clear to me that he doesn't really mean that. Pardon, vous disiez... It's the only way that he can actually have something back on her. Since her natural thing to say, then we're do we're over, we're done. The scene where Charles Boyer uh, brings the earrings back and holds them in his pocket for the first 90% of the scene, only to plunge the matter at the end, is kind of a great example of how sort of disciplined and masochistic that, that character is, and plotting, really. He's never really facing down the problem that his wife was in love with somebody else. He's finding a kind of way to, to manage it that will g obviously give him some pleasure through her pain. I mean, it's human nature. It's nasty and, and it's ugly, but it's definitely the, really the characteristics of, a, of an army general. That kind of discipline to be able to keep his emotions in check on the surface but just sort of drag her through the mud to prove a point. I might not search out a story about, you know, a woman in this period that was kind of trapped by her surroundings. You know, it might not appeal to me instantly. And his introduction to this story gets you into it so that it doesn't matter what kind of film you're into, what kind of story you like to watch, you're grabbed by the throat that you're going to like this telling of it. There's humor and there's a great actress and there's a great story driving it. There's two great men in the leads. There's a great venue for the story. So you have all of these things that, you know, okay, these are great elements, but there's no guarantee that all of those things together makes a movie this terrific. Sort of his trick, I guess, really. You sort of can pick apart this and that about how he did it, but there's a certain point, it's just magic. 